Hi everyone, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. If you've been following on social media or on the channel even, you'll know that I've been getting into pixel art a little bit more as well as game development. And the software that I've taken to using is called A-Sprite. Now A-Sprite's perfect for doing pixel art because that's what the software was created for. So we've got a lot of tricks and utilities inside of that to just increase our workflow, speed things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you 20 tips which I think will increase your workflow inside A-Sprite. You can actually do math functions inside of these text input boxes. So for example, you know that one of your frames is going to be 16 by 16, but you want 5 frames. You could do 16 by 5 and it'll automatically calculate that 80 for you. There's a quick way of flipping sprites horizontally and vertically. We select all of our sprite and press Shift and H. We see that we flip our sprite horizontally and Shift and V flips it vertically. When using our selection tool, we can hold the Shift key to select multiple regions of our sprite. So now both of these will move independently of the body. And you can also hold Shift and Alt while you're using it to remove any bits of these sections as well. With 16 by 16 being a very common sprite size, what you can do, you can double click on one of your projects and it'll automatically select a 16 by 16 grid. If you're not actually working in 16 by 16, you can double click, hold the left mouse button, and then you can drag a 16 by 16 grid around the screen. Pressing control and the single quote key, you can toggle your grid on and off. And this grid setting can be changed if we go to view, grid, grid settings, and if we change this to 32 by 32, we can see that our grid expands to 32 by 32. This will also allow you to just double click and you'll get a 32 by 32 selection each time. We can toggle something that A-Sprite's called Pixel Perfect Drawing. And the way that works is if we see, we just draw normally, we see that we get all sorts of jagged edges. If we enable Pixel Perfect up here and then draw the same shape, we can see that A-Sprite fixes those jagged edges automatically. We can quickly give our sprites an outline by pressing Shift and O. A new window will open up and we see that we have multiple settings down here. So we have the outside squared edges which will give us these jagged edges. If we select the inner side, the circle, we see it gets rid of those for us. We can also have it so we'll get an outline on the top and the bottom, the left and the right, or you can go ahead and select each of these individually to get whichever angles you need. We can quickly swap colours inside of our sprites. If we hold Alt to bring up the colour picker and select the colour that we want to change, we'll change this orange end of the gun, and we'll left click on that to bring that into our foreground colour. And then if we hold Alt again and right click on another colour, we'll take this blue, that'll put it in our background colour for us. Next, if we press Shift and R, we can see we get the to and from, and it masks our colour for us. But we could also do this on a much larger scale. For example, if we changed this bright green to the orange, so we'll hold Alt, left click on the green, right click on the orange, Shift R, and then we see every instance in the image of that light green colour is changed to orange. We can very easily create our own custom brushes inside a Sprite as well. For example, if I draw this extremely bad leaf, give it a little bit of a highlight on one side and give it a shadow at the top. If we select that and press Ctrl and B, we see now we have the brush. Now there's three settings that we can take into consideration here. There is Pattern Align to Source, so what that'll do, that'll align anything that we draw with our original sprite, which it does. We see that we try and draw over it and everything's aligned with that. Next up, we have Pattern Aligned with Destination. 
That works quite similar, but the origin point will be the first time you click down. So if I click here, then this is my origin point instead. And finally, probably the most used is your standard paintbrush, which will just allow you to paint in using a textured or coloured brush. Next is more of an animation tip. We can turn on something called onion skinning. Now what onion skinning does, if you don't know, is if we draw a sprite on our first frame, go to the second frame, we don't know where that sprite was. We'll have to keep toggling back and forth to see where we are. But if we press F3 on our keyboard, that'll enable the onion skinning mode. And as we can see, we can see a slightly faint version of our previous frame. So that'll allow us to draw in, select our next one. We see that we've still got the previous frame. One more, and then go to the fourth. And now when we play the animation, we see we've got that trail. We press F3 again, and then play. That removes the trail. Next, we have something called the Color Curve Adjustment. So we go to Edit Adjustments and Color Curve. We can see we can amend the curve here to globally affect our colors. We can actually select the color palette from a given image. Now, we have this open. Say we want to use all of these colors again to make another soldier. Well, what we can do, we can click the little options button up here, click create palette from current sprite. We know that we're not going to need more than 256 colors from this sprite, so we can press OK, and we see now our color palette contains every single color from inside of our sprite. We can quickly import and export our sprite sheets. So if we go to File, Import Sprite Sheet, we can select the file, and if we select a gunner sprite sheet, we can see we have all of our animation states on one sheet. So our cell size is 48 by 48. We'll go ahead and import that. And now we can see that each of those 48 by 48 cells have been put on their own individual frame. We can play through these, and as you can see, some of these will have to be taken out because it doesn't differentiate between completely empty tiles. Similarly, if we'd created our animations all on their own individual layer, like this, then we could do File, Export Sprite Sheet, and as we can see, it would save as one continuous sprite sheet. And you can pack these in in any way that you like. We can also recolor a sprite using a selected colour palette. Now, as you can see here, I have my colour palette up here, and none of these colours match any of these. So the way that we could do that is click Sprite, Colour Mode, and change it from RGB to Indexed. Now, as you can see, it's picked the closest colour to its original colour from my colour palette and replaced all of the colours within. We can drag and drop multiple images into a sprite at once to open them up as their own individual sheet. So if we select all five of these gunner sheets and bring them over, we see we get five extra tabs load up with each of the images. When animating, we often don't want separate projects for slightly different animations, such as running, dying, crouching, and so on. So what we can do, we can create them all on one sheet using multiple frames. But now if we only want to test, for example, our idle, we know that the first four frames are our idle animation. But the problem with that is, when we press play, it plays through our entire animation, which isn't what we want. Luckily, what we can do, we can select a section of our animation. We know that frames one through four are our idle animation. We can then press F2 to quickly add a loop section in. Now when we play, it'll just loop our idle animation, the first four frames. And exactly the same, our last eight frames, we can do exactly the same. That'll replace the loop section, and now we can loop through our death animation. Similarly to the loop sections, we can create custom tags inside of our animation. 
So we select our idle animation again, our first four frames, right click, new tag. We can set this to idle and we'll give it a nice red color. Click OK and we see we have a label above our four frames saying idle. Next, we know our next three are going to be our jump animation, so we can do exactly the same. Call that jump, and we'll go ahead and give this one a nice green colour. So now we can click in any of our frames in the idle and play. It'll play the idle, and then any frame in the jump, and it'll loop through the jump. We can also use our tags when exporting sprite sheets. So if we go to export sprite sheet again, we can see if we click on sprite, we can now select which tag we want to actually export. Sometimes the default animation speed is slightly too fast for us, or too slow. So if we click frame, constant frame rate, we can amend the duration of our animation. So we'll make this one 200 milliseconds rather than 100, and then when we replay, we can see that our idle animation is a lot slower. This doesn't affect your export, this is just so you can get a feel for your animations in real time inside of A-Sprite. When making pixel art, we often want to make some seamless tiles. That means you can tile the sprite left and right, up and down, and it'll always perfectly match. But that can often be quite difficult. Well, in A-Sprite, if we select View Tiled Mode, we can tile our sprite on the x-axis or the y-axis or both. So we'll click X and we can see that our cursor appears in three places at once. If we just enable the grid, we can see this a little bit better. And now, if we start to draw our texture, we can easily line everything up. If we disable the grid, we can see that now this will loop seamlessly and perfectly. And now that we have our tileable texture, we want to animate it. And again, that can prove quite difficult in some instances. So I'll show you a little trick that I like to use. We'll take a copy of our texture, we'll create a new canvas, and we'll set this to three times as wide as our sprite is, so 48. And we'll paste this in three times. Now what we can go ahead and do, We'll turn the grid on, just so we can see what we're doing. And we've currently got this sprite saved over here. So what we'll do, we'll select everything and shift it over by two pixels. And then we'll take a copy of the centre frame. We'll make a new frame over here and we'll paste that in. Do it again, select all, shift two over, take a copy new frame, put that in, and rinse and repeat up until we get to a final frame. And just like that, we've offset our texture by two pixels each time up until the point we've reached our first frame. So if we go ahead and play this, we can see we have a looping texture. And if we put this in tiled mode and then play it again, we can see that it works perfectly. And that method will work for vertical, horizontal or even diagonal movements. If instead of doing a 1x3 grid, you do a 3x3 grid and only select the centre square and shift all of your pixels up and right by however many you need each time. That way you'll get your diagonal movement. And finally, because I know I'm going to get questions about this in the comments, I do every time I post a pixel art video, people ask, how have I got a dark theme? Well, I'll put a link in the description. This is the dark theme that I use, one by Mort Mort, and it's got full instructions on how to download, how to install, and how to apply it to your A-Sprite software. So again, I'll leave a link in the description for that. So there we have it, 20 or so tips for A-Sprite, to help you hit the ground running and increase your workflow. Just want to say a huge thank you to my one and only supporter over on Patreon, that's GT3000. If you guys want to get involved on Patreon, please follow the link in the description. Any support is greatly appreciated. 
Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized unity hints and tips.